You ever fill out a March Madness bracket? I every have. Every single year. You fill one out every year. You don't every miss. Year. Yeah. You just, you're a bracket guy. The question is how many brackets do I fill out? Yeah. Huh. Per, on average, per year, how many would you say you Two fill to three out? brackets, at least. Huh. Two to, you're a two to three brackets. So uh, let's let's go categories of life then. Like, like a friend group or like some bros. Yep, some guys. Bros before Zoes. I get it. Um, there's like staff. And then staff. Yeah, that's and then, usually. And then, and then what's the third? And then the third one would be like another group of friends mm. or mm. other staff members. Yeah. You just got friends laying around. Just a uh, huge Man, groups of friends. This social guy over here. Last year was my first time doing it. It was your first time doing it. Yeah. Should we do a leaner bracket? Ooh. I think by the time this oh, airs, yeah, it's, it's going to be too way late. too late. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I almost air horned. It was, it was such an idea. Yeah. yeah, no, we can hit Nick Saban real fast just because we're talking You all may be taking a week sports. off, but I'm not. Okay, Nick, we get it, but you did quit yeah, Alabama. He just, he so. actually yeah. just retired. Yeah, yeah. Now you're on the Senate floor talking about how bad NCAA is. So you are taking the week off, actually, <laughs> technically speaking, until you sign your ESPN contract. April, your first year was last year. Yes. And, and didn't you do all mascots? Yeah, I based it all <laughs> off the logos, and I did pretty logos. well for the beginning. Um, I was like, I think I did get first place like one of the first three weeks. Yeah, and then after that, I was thirteenth like the rest of the time. Yeah, I filled out two brackets this morning, and I'm such a sucker for the seating. Mm. Yeah, I'm always like, there's no way this twelve will beat a five. But there's always a twelve five. There's upset. no way this fifteen could come back and get a two. Yeah, but yeah. always. Of course. The hardest one's the eight nine. Yeah. Yes. It's just that sliver of like who's better here? Yeah. Genuinely. I don't. That's always my ups it's always I always go the other way because it's a toss up. You 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 always you you try and predict the upset. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's the only thing that differentiates. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. Well, you're such a smart guy. <laughs> um, I'm the idiot that's like, Duke's gonna go all the way. I got Duke every year in the final four. <laughs> Duke's in the championship game again this year. Like I just I don't even believe Purdue can take out Kansas. Like this, just the way my brain works. It, mm. It's also the power of like brand, yeah, yeah. brand awareness. I'm like Kentucky has to win that game. Uh, my my first bracket ever filled out was when UNC had uh, Tyler Hansborough. Oh gosh, the best. And so now every year I'm like, oh UNC's got they're gonna. But yeah, like it's just like yeah. ingrained. That's what I'm saying. Power yeah. brand, exactly. Yeah, like. I grew up watching Kentucky with Rick Patino, and I'm just like, they're still, even they're though still it's Calipari, they're still, yeah. they're still those guys. Yeah. And um, it always pains me to choose Oregon winning anything. Mm. I just hate it. Like today, yeah, I put or Oregon yeah. pretty far, maybe Elite Eight, not Final Four, I think Elite Eight. And I'm just like, every time I choose them as the winner, I, I die a little bit inside. <laughs> I vomit in my mouth just to touch. Yes. I was like, ah, this is the worst. But I'm. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to figure out? I'm like, I was thinking football for a second. I'm like, oh. And then I was like, well, no, wait, this is basketball. I thought you, the way you were looking <laughs> off into the sunset, I was like, hey, did see, did she see a sea shell? <laughs> you know, Oregon's the Ducks, right? Yep, the Ducks. Even the basketball team them. is still and the And they ducks. are, just so we're clear, yep. they're the lowest. Ugh. They're the scum. They're the worst. Oregon is the absolute bottom feeder. We yeah. cannot stand Oregon. No, nope, can't At stand all. them. I've trained my or boys. The Cougars. Mm. Yeah, Cougs, I can tolerate. They're like your cousin that can't catch yeah. a break. Yeah. They're just like, I feel bad for them. You I'm trying to it. think. Are there any Bay Area teams that are significant at all? Uh, Stanford, Stanford has had, had, had a few days. Cal, not so mm, much. You know, yeah. they've put out some stars. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lynch, so oh. on and so forth. But no but, but but Stanford has had a few runs. Okay, makes sense. E- even, even in basketball, but more so in football, Christian McCaffrey, so on and so forth. They, they, you know, I think when Har- Harbaugh was there, he had a great yeah. run with them. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. But all I have to say, it's, it's March Madness. It starts tomorrow for us. It's a 9 a.m. start. It's one of the best days of the year in my opinion one of the best days of the year 9 a.m tomorrow it'll go it'll go all day the first two days of march madness basketball all day long it is a dream and the fact that my how about this today this is no guys this is no word of a lie this kid winston charles veach this morning set his alarm on his ipad no wi-fi on that thing by the way (laughs) this that's good so we're very clear no wi-fi on it um, just so we're just so we're aware of how serious this guy is, got permission, asked his mom to do it with me because he knew I wouldn't. 
woke up this morning at 3 a.m. to watch the Dodgers play their opening game in South no Korea. Way. I think the game was held in South Korea. Wow. He watched the whole thing. That when I so got cool. up this morning, he, he he was still awake. Game was over. And he's like, Dad, I, I tried to go back to sleep. I couldn't. I'm just so excited. The Dodgers won. He watched the whole game. <laughs> that is so cool. And 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 by the way, if you're if you think that discipleship doesn't work, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Three in the morning. That is unbelievable. Dedication. And he, by the way, got in trouble, lost screens last weekend, all the way up to Tuesday, but made sure, Dad, can I please get my screens back for Wednesday? It'll technically be Wednesday, 3 a.m. I gotta watch the Dodgers opening it. Watch the whole wow. thing. That's I'm just amazing. telling you, you all may be taking the week off, but He's I'm not. not. <laughs> but what Winston's not, is that unbelievable? A 10 year old. Yeah. 10 year old filled out a bracket. Like I've listened to Bill Dad, Simmons technically talk. Technically, it's Wednesday. Yeah. But I've, I've listened to Bill Simmons talk about sports fans because, you know, like that's that whole world, the ringer world, the, yep. mm -hmm. the Grantland world. Grantland, and he's yeah. like, yeah, he's just like, some kids are just born like this. Yeah. Jeez. He's got that obsessive gene. He can list the whole Dodger lineup, their, the batting order. Their jersey number, yeah. first and last name. Yeah, that's like my brother. And when I was little, he would be outside mowing the lawn and you could hear him if you were like in a room where there was a window open, he'd be like rehearse. He'd be practicing like sports newscasting. Like oh, there we he'd go. be going through all that's of, cool. like his version of daydreaming is like making up games see? from the see? players. And, and by the way, this is what I was doing when I was that age. I was practicing leadership leaning. <laughs> you know, a leader is somebody that takes charge. Dear stuffed animal. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you guys are world changers. All right. Let's enough. Let's get to it. Here we go. Hey, welcome everybody to Leadership Lean In episode number 152. 152 episodes in. At, at some point, guys, it's getting dangerous. We're going to hit 200 at some point. It's crazy. If we keep doing this, you know what happens? As promised progress uh thank you everybody for joining our channel uh hit the subscribe button by the way and um make sure you don't miss out on any of the leadership lean in episodes we are a small nation indivisible under god you get it uh we are trying to get a little bit better in our leadership we're leaning in like we lean into wisdom we believe that we can get better and uh, so thank you for everybody. Comment below, where are you leaning in from? Let us know. It always encourages us to let us, uh, when we see like, man, it's crazy. Someone's leaning in from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Someone's leaning in from uh, uh, Rhode Island or fill in the blank, just or all over the world. Thank you so much. And uh, as always, I am joined here by Nate Dumlau and... <laughs> Very good. That's I'm impressed. Almost coming into the month of April, mm. Maestas. Great is job. It, is it? Is it? Is it? How do you say your last name? Maestas. Maestas. Mm -hmm. hey, April's getting a couple comments on who's <laughs> who is that. Wait, if we have time I, at the end, you got no. It. Yeah, you yeah. There's a couple really, comments. Okay. I I want to just kind of. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, some study people took their shot. Yeah, and I'm not mad at that. Comments, and then no. some people are like shooting down the shooter. I'm like, no, no, let no, you, on, a dude. shooter's got to shoot. Absolutely, let it fly. You guys know our philosophy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Also, by the way, in the link, subscribe to our leadership email every week. We That's put right. out a leadership email uh, that just have a few thoughts to help improve you. Overflow, get out of here. It's just, I'm a user. I'm not a seller. With Overflow. I don't sell this product. Hmm. I use this product. Shout out to Overflow. Nate, hit us with the details of how Overflow is. I've been saying this. It's, it's, not, it's not facetious. I'm not playing this up. When I drop this line, I, I mean what I say. Gosh, dang it. Golly <laughs> darn it. They're changing the game. Mm. Yes. They're game changers. Yes. Not, not quite history makers. Not delirious. Martin Smith. Mm. Not history makers yet. <laughs> But they're game changers. What, are the, what, what, what game in particular are they changing, Nate? Oh, well, I'm a user and aware of Oh, Overflow. wow, I didn't even notice. Oh, I, oh, the, I noticed. That's merch. great Oh, don't merch. think I didn't notice. Yeah, with the merch. Don't you I think I it. didn't notice? Yep. Uh, Overflow is completely innovating the game of giving. And 
creating innovative ways, creative ways for you to get funds in your fundraisers. If you're a church, if you have an organization that's receiving funds, Overflow empowers you to receive not just traditional uh, means of income like cash or debit, but things like crypto, stock, uh, through wills, all sorts of creative ways to do it. Uh, they just sent us in the mail yes. these, these little stickers that you can now tap with you your tap. phone. So cool. And I'm obsessed. Like every, everyone on our staff is running over We're the like, table, yeah, tap. all tapping that's this crazy. sticker. And that's what it does. It, it drives people to give. Overflow empowers people to to give. And so if you want to get involved or you want to see if this is the right fit for you and your organization, head over to overflow.co slash LLI to book a demo, get connected with their team. They're all stars. They're amazing. They're innovating at such a fast pace. So head on over overflow.co slash LLI. Okay. Today we are talking about, it's one of my favorite things to do in the whole world right there. Want me to do it one more time? Okay. Sounds good. It's all about the timing on that thing, man. It really is. I'm a big, I could be a drummer, you know. Oh. I, want, I want to talk today about episode 152, how to lead. Oh. I know that you are a leader, but I want to talk to you about how to lead. Three important things that I think you've got to apply in your leadership just to get a little bit better. We're going to jump right in. Here's the first one, and here, here's a great way on how to lead. Lead as a learner. Always, the greatest leaders are always asking questions. And so it's not about being a know-it-all. Instead, I would say, let's be an ask-it-all. Let's try and Ooh, figure it that. out. Let's try and learn from people. And learning is a posture to me. It's not saying I only learn from Patrick Lencioni or Simon Sinek or, or you know, um, is it Ken Blanchard? Sure. John mm. Maxwell's another John one. Maxwell, of course, <laughs> stop. It's a, it's Craig, a given. Yeah. He's like, he's on our throne. We get it. <laughs> Ken Blanchard. Uh, it's not just learning from the greats. I think you can learn from anybody. Yeah. It's, co- it's the constant quest. If I want a lot of good things to say, I got to put a lot of good things inside. And so when you posture yourself as a student, a lifelong learner, there is no arrival in leadership. In leadership, you're never like, I figured it out. But I, I think that like, one of the great things about um, the quest of becoming a great leader is the acknowledgement that I am shocked by how little I know. Mm. Like, I can't believe, I am, I am alarmed by how little I have discovered. And I think the, the opposite gets so impressed with himself. Mm. Look at what I've learned. Look at what I have to offer. Look at these principles and these truths. But I think the best leaders are, are leading because they're learning. They're constantly evolving, growing, changing, maturing. How is that happening? Oh, because they're constantly learning. Hmm. And the more you learn, the more you can apply. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. That's why education is discipleship. The more I can learn, the more I can be educated, the more I can develop and grow. And so I would just encourage you, you want to know how to lead? Lead as a, as, you are the model student. I was watching this. I was reading this. I was listening to this. Last night, uh, we were at a birthday party and um, we are talking about um, audiobooks and someone was um, recommending this parenting book. And, and she goes, are you, are you uh, a reader or are you a listener? I'm like, oh, I love audiobooks. She's like, me too. She's like, you've got to get this book. And then as we're talking more and more, we're talking about other audiobooks. And, you know, when you're around other learners, Ooh. it's so exciting yeah. to talk about what you just read. Totally. What you just heard. This article. This I have this uh, friend in, in my life. Shout out to uh, Moksha that lives in New York and Miami. Mm. He is constantly sending me uh, articles from the Wall Street Journal, yeah, from the New York Post, um, from uh, I'm just trying to think of all the different outlets. So many different media outlets. This guy's sending me podcasts. Mm. He's sending me uh, business articles be- because I can tell he just consumed it. He's giving it away. That's yep. good. That's yep. how leaders lead. They lead by if you greatly you have received freely you should give Mm -hmm. it's just it's constant that's kind of what this podcast is to be honest kind of the newest revelation of what we've been chewing on thinking on and all of that comes from what we're digesting so 
always lead as a learner. And if you have that quality, I think people are drawn to it. People are attracted to those that they can sense. You're on the same journey as me. You might be further down the road. You might have a few things figured out more than me, but I can sense that you're just as hungry. You have that same, which requires humility. You, you can't be a know-it-all and be a learn-it-all. You just can't. Mm. You've got you've to have that hum, humility quality of going like, I'm posturing myself as tell me, teach me, show me. I need insight, revelation, understanding, knowledge. I got to get it. And the more you get that, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you grow. Yep. This That's becomes great. the pursuit of life, in my opinion. <laughs> totally. The addiction. Right. Do you think people underutilize the value of material, teaching material, and hope to rely on experience? Yeah, I, I, I think um, the problem is I think that it takes a lot of discipline to learn. Mm. And I think most people are drawn to entertainment rather than discipleship wow. or learning. Yeah, that's really So good. I'd rather be entertained and just kind of um, check out from my world and problems rather than lean in and like, Think about how much better you can get with money mm. today. You have every resource available. Right. You have there, there's so many tools just on just on financial fitness or financial literacy. We have no excuse to be unhealthy and to be honest any area of our life because there's so much tools and resources yeah. out there. So in order to avoid all that, what am I what am I doing? I'm just looking for entertainment. Yeah. And so because I'm doing that, I'm not disciplining myself to grow. So I don't think it's just relying on experience. I think it's avoiding the dentist, avoiding the the, the bank account, the yeah. bank, avoiding anything <laughs> mm. because the cost of it is great. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm reading this book, or I'm listening to this book. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> called, Thank you for correction. Called willpower, and it's talking about things like learning a new skill. Mm. Uh, it has two really good observations. Number one, don't try to learn a new skill in the afternoon. Mm. There you go. Learn it either in the early in the morning or when you've had time to rebuild your uh, like cognitive yes. tank yes. so you can actually engage it. And the second thing is learning a new skill or learning a new um, idea is compound. It's like investing in a highly explosive stock. A new skill will go so much farther. A new oh idea gosh. will go so much farther than any other investment you can make in your life. Wow. And that just requires you to be a learner. Do you have a place you go to, like uh, a list of books or or? Like sometimes I'll finish a book, then I'll go like, okay, let's go shopping for a new book. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, that, like, do you have a list? Like, where do you go to? Like, what resources stand out to you that that gives you? You, you know, know, I the think next the, place to learn. The greatest resource on, on the next place to learn is your company that you keep, mm. the people yeah, that you live good. life with. That's good. There, there is, there is no better resource than the people that are trying to grow and learn alongside of you. So last night at the party, what are we doing? We are swapping. Mm. Hacks, cheat codes, development, right? Mm -hmm. There's yep. no, there's no, there's no better. It's like the whole saying: there's no greater marketing than word of mouth. Yeah, right. So that's the greatest hack. I love there's that. no worse place of being on uh, Apple and trying to look up top leadership books, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and going like, what is good? Yeah. Or what do I want? So then I'm totally dependent upon titles, subtitles, authors, their credibility, who recommended, how many Amazon reviews did it get? Why do they have a hundred? I saw last night on Greenlight because we were talking about the best audiobooks. So I was telling somebody the best audiobook I think that I've listened to is Greenlight just because yeah. of his voice. <laughs> it has 177,000 reviews. Five wow, stars. reviews. 177,000. Okay, so <laughs> that's how you know something's good. Yeah, right. So sometimes when you're looking for stuff, you go, well, clearly this is good. It's got yeah. 16,000. It's good. I think the Ruthless Elimination of, of, of Hurry, John Mark Comer, scumps on like 11 or 16,000 reviews on Jeez. Amazon. Amazing. So you know something's good. Mm -hmm. What if it only has like, you know, 150, <laughs> 200? Yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it as good? I right. actually stay away from them. You do? Yeah, what I, do you I mean, mean? I go like, oh, there's only 150 reviews. Am I going to waste my time by reading or listening to this book. Like yeah. I, I think the review thing is real. I've been going on chat GBT and I've been typing in, pretend you are blank John Maxwell yeah. wow. and create a list of books that you would read on this subject. Hmm. Wow. There you go. And it would spit out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
okay, here's my, you know, yeah, or whatever subject, finances. Pretend you're Dave Ramsey yeah. and recommend 10 books. That's but, but, but it's, it, to me, it's, it's the posture. It's the position. We yeah, can never yeah. get over that. Tell me. Teach me. And, and being open to learn, not just from the greats. You can learn from anyone, mm-hmm. any situation, any circumstance. It is a heart posture. Number two, how to lead. Lead as a developer of other leaders. Belay has changed the game once again. Here to give us the insightful details of how you can get involved. I know there's leaders here that are looking to hire. I know you're looking. I know you're searching high and low. We have found the answer for you. April, hit them with the sauce, a.k.a. the details. Absolutely. Our friends at Belay have the flexible staffing solutions that you need to delegate the details and free yourself up to lead because we all need to delegate free up some time. Uh, so whether it's accounting, administrative, social media tasks, belay, um, their exceptional US based talent can take that off your plate. So to help you get started, belay is offering a free download of their ebook, rise up and lead. Well, learn how you can spend more time focused on doing what only you can do by levering the power, the power of delegation. So just text leaner. That's all caps L E A N E R to five, five, one, two, three for the free copy. Again, L E A N E R to the number five five one two three. They're going to connect with you. You're going to get this ebook. Uh, find the right the right hire right now through Belay. How to lead? Lead as a developer of other leaders. You've yeah. got to put a premium and a priority on developing those that are around you. Great leaders do not fall from the sky. Great leaders don't just knock on your door and go. Here I am, mm. and I arrived great. No, it takes a lot of discipline in your world, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of devotion to other people to develop others. So how do you develop other great leaders? One of the great ways is life on life. We're living life together. We are in community together. It's not just in the office together. And, and we're doing our best in the office to correct some things. But we got to get some meals. We got we to gotta go to the park. We got to share some, some life on life to really develop. And I always think, how do, you, how do you really develop other people? It takes time. It takes sacrifice. It takes, takes commitment. It takes devotion. But one of the great questions is, what are you willing to tolerate? Mm. Because when someone is not great... And how do you take someone from a level one or two up to a 10? It is the accountability that you're holding them on their, we we can see the potential. We can see there's greatness. I think one of the things about great leaders is they can spot talent. Hmm. They can see talent. This guy is, could be, oh, potential. So you see that. You see and this, this is an old line, but you see gold when even others see garbage. Because hmm. most people are seeing where they are, you see where they could go. And this is, to me, one of the discerning things about a leader developer is going like, yeah, there's some character, but if you work past that short fuse, you work past that inability to take care of money, you, you look past these certain deficiencies right now, if we can get the right character developed, and the right chemistry with others, they're going to be great. So the question is, what am I willing to tolerate on their path from two to ten? Wow. Mm. And a lot of times, a lot of leaders get stuck at the three, four because they've been allowed to do whatever they want. Yeah. And so their their growth gets stunted by you, the developer. So I would say the best thing you could do is be committed to follow up, accountability course correction. This is different than criticism. Criticism is just going like, I don't like the way you did that. Hmm. Developing is addressing character flaws, character issues, things that are going to hurt them down the road, bad habits that they've got to break. So I think the best leaders, how do I lead? I lead with a commitment to develop people around me. And that doesn't mean babysit, but it does mean holding people accountable to going like, whoa, 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 you, you, you said this in that meeting. Well, well, you, hey, that's not going to work down the road. Hey, we're not always going to be together, and I'm committed to you even when you're not here. So let's work on this stuff because I know you You might not see it even in yourself, but I can see it. I've been around enough. Trust me, you're great. Hmm. But there are some things that are going to slow you down. Or I always love this line. I, 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 I think you you cut this up the other day, the God-given potential, or mm-hmm. Macy or somebody did. Mm-hmm. But but it's like that, 
I've been stuck on this line. Your God given yeah. potential. There is a grace, there is a God given potential that's locked up inside of you. The only thing that would prohibit you from not tapping into your God given potential is allowing these things that you have developed in your life to hold you down or slow you down. Yeah. We've got to we gotta break those chains off. And so a lot of times the way that happens is someone is in your life developing you holding you accountable, not allowing you to act like a knucklehead. It's not because they're mad at you. It's that they're committed to you. Mm -hmm. And this becomes whether someone can... It's not even really about the leader developer sometimes. More, it's about the student going like, I can't accept the bit. I can submit my life. I can't ex 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 receive and accept constructive criticism. When people can't do that, it's like, man, that was such a bummer because they could have been so great. But I'm going to do my best, no matter what their reaction is, to develop those that are around me. Yeah. Can, can we just talk about accountability really quick? Because I think the accountability that is the stereotypical accountability is once a week, I'm going to meet with someone who has authority in my life and I'm going to confess the stuff you know I've kind of gone through and then maybe they'll give me a verse or give me some advice. And mm. then that's accountability. Mm. In, in my experience, especially with you, that's never been the case. Mm. You know, I don't know how many once a week meetings we've had about accountability, mm. but I've been around you so often and so much. In that moment, you're keeping me, hey, just real quick. Yeah, real hey, why quick. Why do you say that? Yeah. And I think that people mess up accountability because it requires you to live life next to someone. That's yeah. exactly right. You can't do it one day a week. It's got to be in the flow of yes. everyday life. Yeah. And I, and I think that's why people hide mm -hmm. is that they don't, you know, community is so messy. That's why I think people avoid community because in community comes great accountability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In community, it's like you don't get to act that way in community because everybody's like, hey, that wasn't cool. <laughs> right. And so most people, because of character deficiencies, stay away because they're like, I'm not good enough to be around other people. I've got these glaring weaknesses. I think that security goes, I know I'm deficient. I know I'm not well or I'm not there yet. But I know the only way for me to grow is in relationship. Yeah. Hey, why did you do that? <laughs> hey, do you realize how offensive that is? Hey, you, you left us with the bill. Yeah. That wasn't cool. Yep. And that's how you grow. That's how you get better is through relationships. The, the lie of even developing as a leader is that I can listen to podcasts and read books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the way that you really grow is living in community, yeah. being on a team, being on a staff, being being with people and being around people. And that rub, that challenge, yeah. that sharpening is what really accelerates your growth. Yeah. That's great. What would you say to someone who is maybe doesn't realize they're developing people mm. and that people are being influenced by them and it comes to a point where they realize, oh, I got to take this seriously and be intentional about this? Yeah. How would you go about that, address that? Well, I think it's always good to let people, it's like um, even, this is what we do with our kids all the time, right? It's always good to acknowledge how influential somebody is so they can weaponize that for good and not for bad. Mm. So they can weaponize it as a serving agent, not as a self-serving agent. So I think like, for example, like my son, when he set, talks a certain way, I will say, hey, just so you, just a heads up, when you say that, you know that your eight-year-old little brother and your six-year-old little brother is mm -hmm. going to say that. Mm -hmm. so the reason why I don't want you to say that is because you might understand what that means, but they don't, and that's not good. So I think the same thing applies with 30-year-olds and 50-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Hey, just so you know, like, when you, the ripple effect of your decisions are wild. Do you understand how influential you are? Do you understand how much, how powerful you are? I, I've said it probably a thousand times. I said it on this podcast maybe 152 times. <laughs> the fastest way to influence, lose influence. The fastest way to lose influence is not to be aware of influence. Mm -hmm. How influential you are. And then when you're when you're negligent with it and you're reckless with it, and you don't use it for its proper use, all of a sudden, you st people start to lose respect and trust because you let them down a bad path. And they're like, wait, why did I follow so-and-so down this path? Yeah, It really messed with me. Yeah. We know someone, and they, they went viral on social media, and they mm -hmm. went from 
you know, zero to 180,000 followers kind of in, you know, out of nowhere. And they started being complete and authentic to who they were. And then eventually they stopped posting the viral stuff and they were, they just went back to who they were and they lost all their following. Mm. And the consequence of that is all these people who were looking to that person for advice, trust, you know, how to live their life, realize that it was all unauthentic. Mm. And so now they have all the collateral damage of figuring out, was this a lie? Is this the wrong way? And in leadership, if you're not leading authentically with your influence, then it, there's so much collateral damage yeah. that happens in the wake of that. It's a scary proposition what you're talking about, having influence and not realizing you have it. Mm. That's actually terrifying to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I think, you know, we're, we're, everyone loves this word self-awareness. And I think with self-awareness, you know, comes the responsibility of, of understanding who you are and how powerful your words are and what you're really put on earth to do. Mm -hmm. Did God give you all this power and influence to weaponize it just for your own gain or mm -hmm. your own good or your own platform to monetize that, make money? Or, or do you have all this power as a resource to help and to give, to heal, yeah. to bless, to encourage, to make someone else feel big rather than use them so you can feel big? That becomes, to me, true influence when you realize, wait, I've got all this platform and all this power, but it's definitely not for me. I can recognize it's for something bigger than even my own gain. That's leadership to That's me. Great. And that there begins the process of you developing other people around you. Here's the third one. How to lead. Lead creating great culture. Be obsessed with environment. Be obsessed with the culture that you create. Never stop developing. And I think when we when we talk about culture, we talk about what are you willing to what are you allowing? What are you willing to tolerate in your culture? So you define culture. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to look like. This is what I want to feel like. This is what I want the sound and, and, and the communication. And then anything that's outside of that culture you created, police it. Mm -hmm. Hold it accountable. Do not allow it. If you tolerate those things, it's going to start to pervert. It's going to start to distort your culture. So you are a culture carrier. You're a culture creator. And I, I love this. I heard this story about Nick Saban uh, yesterday. Nick Saban, before, uh, you know, he would bring in these, these you know, leadership gurus and these guys that can talk really well to his team. And this one guy told a story. He's getting ready to go talk to Alabama football. And before he went into the, me uh, the meeting with the football team, Nick Saban wanted to meet with him to hear his talk. Mm. And so Nick's, okay, what are, you, what are you talking about today? So the guy starts giving him, you know, uh, the talk, and this is what we're going to go through. And Nick's, I don't like this one. No, nope, let's take that out. I don't think that's good. And the guy said he was so nervous. You know, here is Nick Saban's editing his speech. <laughs> yeah. And, and so he, then he goes out and he talks to the football team, and he does as good of a job as he can. But they say Nick Saban, if someone was speaking to his team and he didn't like what they were saying, he just shut them down. Mm. because he's protecting his culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. You can't just allow these outside influences and these other people to speak into it. No, you're, the most precious thing you have in the world is your heart, your conscience, your life, and who you are, because you are the ultimate carrier of culture. Culture is how we act, react, and respond to other people. Mm. This it, culture is not what we say. Culture is what we do. We carry the culture. And as you lead, I want to encourage you, develop a culture you're proud of. Develop a culture that when you come into the, to the office, you come to work, you go, this is the culture we want to create. And, and the, the great thing about developing a great culture is you're constantly policing it. Mm -hmm. Because the, just because you set it and it's on the walls doesn't mean everybody's behaving that way. Mm. doesn't mean everybody's living up to those standards. So I always try and make the culture the bad guy, not me. Right. So here's our vision, our values, and our standards. These are the... The, the walls or these are the lines. We're going to live within this box and we're going to have fun within that. Anything outside of that is n we just can't allow it because we've defined clearly what our culture is. And when you do that and you lead strong with that, everybody feels safe. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels like, man, that, yeah, we know what th this is. And anything that's outside of that is like, oh, right.
because our culture is defined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you lead as a learner. We're developing, but we're also creating a culture that we're proud of and we're excited about. I love that. Culture trumps vision and strategy for breakfast every single day. Culture trumps everything. It's good. I think the culture also, something I've really noticed, especially here at Zoe, at this organization, is that culture really empowers people. Yes. And it gives people authority to lead Mm. um, because they have those safe boundary lines. Whereas, you know, if you don't know where you're going, how can you take someone else with you? Yes. And so when we define culture, when we clearly state our mission, our vision, our values, and not only those things, but how daily Mm. we're accomplishing those things, there's no better feeling of security, safety, empowerment of, oh, I not only can do this for myself, Mm. but because this is so prominent and because it's not just a lesson we learned, but it's our culture, Mm. I feel like I can empower someone else. That's exactly right. There you go. I've received it. I'm digesting it. I'm learning it. I'm chewing on it. And because I'm internalizing it, then it could come out of me. Mm -hmm. That to me is strong culture. So good. Yeah, absolutely. I I think culture is something that you can learn to replicate in in grow. So the stronger the culture it is, the stronger or the easier you're going to be able to replicate leaders in your in your organization. That's right. Really weak culture. It's really hard to replicate other people Mm -hmm. like you. Yeah. Because you have to have such strong police officers of that weak culture. That's right. And when the culture can get to the place where, like you said about community, it just there's accountability in community because the culture of that community mm. is strong enough to create or to, to reproduce itself. That's right. And so I, I love that about, you know, um, I think maybe it was a couple podcasts ago or something like that. We were talking about culture and you brought up the point. You're like, it's not that they had a, a bad culture. It's that they didn't police the that's culture. That's it. That's yeah. everything. And that's what it is. It's like leaders are always looking to go, wait, wait, that's something that we don't do. Yeah. Here's what we do instead but police officers the police officers of culture i don't know culture carriers culture carriers yeah 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 yeah. it's also praising the right culture that's exactly Mm, right that's good so you can't just shout out oh that's not our culture you have to go oh man i love that you did that that's so us i actually want to be more like that that's right that's exactly right and and i think um when you're praising not just a good effort but when you're praising man that's exactly how we want to run the play I think that inspires everybody around to go like, oh, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, It's a culture of celebration. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's why it's so important that you're carrying it. It's more about what you're saying yes to than what you're saying no to. Yeah, We are going to live with these values and mm-hmm. these principles and, these truths, and we're excited about it. And I think when you do that in a strong way and you lead that way, I think people are drawn and attracted to it. I am always inspired by strong culture. Even if it's not my culture, I can I can acknowledge it and respect it and go like, wow, they worked hard mm-hmm. to develop this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a commitment. It's not overnight. And so uh, we love you. We thank God for you. We're just leaning, not back. How loud is that chair? By the way, that's a loud <laughs> oh chair. Right We're not leaning back. We're leaning. What's the light? next word? In. Yeah. We're leaning in. <laughs> I almost said forward. I'm like, wait, are we all saying this together? <laughs> We're leaning in to leadership. We love you so much, leaners. Thank you again. Hit subscribe, leave a comment, share the pod. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the pod. Uh, I love saying pod. Sharing mm-hmm. the pod as of late. We love you and we'll see you for episode 153 next week. Mm-hmm.